What's up? It's lip service. And you know, this is like our special holiday edition, and I'm really excited for this. And um, we'll get more into it. But I'm Angela Yee. I'm L'Oreal. And we have two special guests. Ryder Blank and Issa Davis are here. Woo-woo! Now, you Thanks guys, <laughs> you women are writers for She's Gotta Have It. And me and L'Oreal got into it over this show. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Come on, oh, spill it. it. Well, no, spill first, tea. I'm going to tell you why. Because she was mad I watched the whole thing without her. Yeah, that, oh, so that was the first yeah. thing. <laughs> that was yeah. the first thing. She was on episode five, and I was just then putting it on. I'm like, you watch this whole thing? Oh, my God. <laughs> She was like, no, because what happened was I had got the... I'm like, yeah, okay, Angela. <laughs> no, what really happened was we did have the interview, you know, with the cast members. So I want to make sure I saw all of them. And if I wait for her, it just wasn't going to happen. But she really had an attitude. <laughs> I was mad. About yeah. it, but I was so excited when I found out they were doing the series because I remember the movie. Obviously, I had seen it so long ago. And I remember it being like kind of controversial and so different than what was out there at that time. Right, yes. right, yeah. yeah. It was ahead of its time. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, uh, black black woman um apologetic about unapologetic sorry belvedere yeah. uh, unapologetic about her sex life having you know three lovers and not you know having any qualms about it mm-hmm. 30 years ago i think yeah, yeah. It was. you think times are so different now like is it or do you think it's still kind of the same as far as how society judges you as a woman if you're sleeping with you know more than one man but you're single i mean I think it's, you know, the changing same, like we like to say, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. because, because I think there's more recognition mm-hmm. that women should be equal to men. There, there shouldn't be that double standard. And at the same time, I think that there's still so much in terms of shaming, you know, there's right. so much in terms of, you know, people just saying like, oh, OK, well, she had that coming to her. You know, she's a hoe. Like right. if anything goes wrong. It's like, oh, well, she was with, you know, this. what that, was she third. wearing? Right. Exactly. What time so were you still, coming still home so at much night? Blame. And yeah. we see that it's instantaneous. Right. You know what I mean? Um, like you see somebody like Rihanna and we love her and I, I we actually love the fact of what she represents like she's unapologetic about whatever she does she makes these guys look crazy right, right? and she's just like I don't give a shit right mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. she um, she's also Caribbean and mm-hmm. you know women from the Caribbean they don't apologize for sure and they about tea but <laughs> but there's always some scrutiny behind it mm-hmm. you know and so we're not quite there yet women still make what yeah. 70 cents 77 to the men it's, to the men's yeah. dollar mm-hmm. and so i feel like across the board there's so much more so much further we have to go yeah. as a, as women but i think that in this day and time the show still feels like it's a conversation piece mm-hmm. and I think that anytime we can give women permission to just do whatever the fuck they want then <laughs> we need to kind of support those kind of things because people I don't know about you Issa but people hit me up all the time since the show has come out just saying like you know I'm I'm releasing my inner Nola. That's it. Summer 2018. <laughs> I'm no longer apologizing for what I want to do. I don't know if they're all going to expose themselves as right. she did in the right, end because right, right. there's a lot of questions about how realistic that is. Mm-hmm. But just to say, be me. Huh? me. <laughs> you would do I it. I would no. listen. I would not. If I was dating more than one guy, they are not going to meet each other. I'll be horrified. Well, can well, I? That's so- the thing. With, okay, go ahead. Well, I, I was just going to say because- I have a friend who is who who. Calls calls himself polyamor- polyamorous. I can't even say the word. See, polyamorous. polyamorous. <laughs> he has several partners, and they all know about each other. And I think that they had an agreement from the very beginning because, right. yeah. you know, when he brings each lover around his friends, he doesn't want the friends to feel like we have to perform or right. lie. Mm-hmm. And so there are people who, you know, are actually making it work and That's they're in weird. these relationships. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Only because he'd be like, oh, last week with Kim and you sitting there like, damn, you was with Kim last week. Right. Like, that's the only thing that I would feel like. Your own is, jealousy. You yeah, get, well, not even jealousy. It's just that if the friend, all right, for instance, you out with him and his friends. And his friend come over to him and say, like, yeah, when when you and Kim last week and you sitting right there, mm. you get what I'm saying? I'm supposed to just be okay with that? Like, <laughs> well, uh, if you have an agreement. Me, but yeah, if you have an agreement. I mean, right. that's and the understanding. whole thing is that people have completely different love styles, love languages, love personalities. Some people are just, let me lock it down with this one person forever. Mm-hmm. You know, some people are like, let me lock it down 
just for show with this one person, but I'm going to have all these DL play things on the side, <laughs> which to me, that's really what's messed up. The mm-hmm. thing that Nola does that is so amazing is she's totally accountable. And yeah. that's what I think, you know, people who are truly polyamorous, you do, you have to say like, this is what I'm up to. I'm with other people and you have to be straight up about it. Not only it's like, it's both psychological health is also physical health. Mm-hmm. Like you need to know yeah. these things. And I think that's what's really great about you know what what nola models whether or not it's hard for people to get with people to understand that you might actually be that open right that's but what the about thing. them meeting each other though i i think it's one thing to be like i'm dating other people right right well i'll say this i'll say this i had one little <laughs> spell of polyamory <laughs> okay where i was i was like coming out of college and and i was just kind of thinking to myself i've never really tested the notion of monogamy. I just always assumed, you know, I'm just going to be with this one person at a time. And then when I came out of college, I just thought, well, what if I tried, you know, dating a few people at the same time and seeing what that's like? Mm-hmm. And I did. And and the two of the people did know about the other person, like met each other. Wow. And I was just... You set it up for them met, to meet each other or well, it was a they, coincidence? I, just, I was like, why don't you guys come over to my house? I like them both. No. Wow. There were a whole bunch, were a whole bunch of people <laughs> see, there. That see, that contained space, though. That See, that. if I'd have That's done so. it, it'd have been at a park <laughs> where they have witnesses <laughs> so that if something shit pops off, you like to do it I outside. can run in a different... <laughs> right, you know what I mean? No, no, safe no. public <laughs> space. There were a lot of people. There were a lot of people there. Okay, I thought it was just like a... No, no, no. There were a lot of people there. And I can't say that, you know, like the person who I wasn't spending the night with was happy about it that night. You know? That's mad awkward. And in fact, right, in fact don't you have him on the line? <laughs> right, don't you, isn't he on the line? He's calling right now, actually. <laughs> Let's but, ask know, him. I mean, the thing was though is that I, I I tested it out. They knew they were. It was and it was not. It was not. It was not easy to deal with that feeling that mm-hmm. they had about the other person. And then, you know, after a couple of months of that, I was like, this is tired. Yes, ta- I, I can't handle this. So now I know, and I'm good to go back to right. You did it. Monogamous. You got monogamous. it out of your system. Right. So now I know. I think the thing with um, Nola's example, as mm-hmm. I should say, is like, you know, what I hear from a lot of my male friends is that they cheat or they take other lovers and keep it quiet because they don't think that the the woman that they're seeing will understand it. Right. They never really ask us and give us a chance and they might to stick around. You know, exactly. Now that's what I think mm-hmm. maybe the reason they don't tell us is because we might actually be okay with it. Right. And then they'd have to think about us entertaining other people. You might lovers. be like, well, you doing you, so right, I Right, yeah. right. I'm gonna do me. But I feel like give me a choice. Don't right. just put me exactly. in a situation right. where it's like exactly. I'm blindsided. Right. You know what I mean? Just give me a choice. Exactly. Let me know. You have to let me know. Exactly. You think that for black women and white women is different like you know, it, mm-hmm. I think it might be different only because black women not to get all deep what the, but black mm-hmm. women in terms of like our sexuality and connection to a time when we didn't really own our bodies in this country I do feel like there's just this added pressure often to as a black woman to perform in the light of good you know what I mean right. and when we do something I don't know that white women feel that it, it speaks for an entire race or an entire gender. Right. You know what I mean? Okay. And yeah. So I do think that might make it harder for I, us. Yeah, I feel like we had different rules too. Like in college, you know, I feel like, because you know how they always say Becky is like, you know, obviously that came from white girls giving head. Yeah. And I feel like I know a lot of white women because I went to a, a predominantly white college, but they feel like, you know, giving head is nothing. I feel like for us, it's a bigger deal in a way. Like, guys would always prefer that you had sex with somebody than get them head. When I was young, you when Don't I you was think? young, you gave head, you was a hoe. <laughs> that was shit. Oh, she gave him head. She a hoe. Like, <laughs> damn, he didn't even mm, fuck you. You just sucked him change. That has changed. That has changed. That's it. As soon as the dick hit the lip, hoe. Like, <laughs> I li- that would be a great song. As soon as the dick hits the low. lip, hoe. <laughs> <laughs> Coming out 2018. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it used to know. be. But we no, could do like no. a black rap remake, but instead of whoa, it could be a hoe. Oh. She was, was a hoe. hoe. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Know. I mean, it's hard for me to generalize like that, though, because, you know, like, because I feel like there are plenty. I think that being promiscuous, whether you're doing it on the low or doing it up above for everyone <laughs> to see, you know, that runs through every 
different race, every different. Oh, I don't, you I don't, don't believe that. No, because like you said, it seems to be for for white women, the stereotype is that like there aren't as many qualms, you know, mm-hmm. like giving head, sucking dick, or whatever. It's like it's just more of a social thing right. whereas with black women we saw it on that episode of Insecure where right. they were like kind of like oh no girl I don't do I, I have and all of these parameters we have to be, have a certain <laughs> level of relationship <laughs> yes. for me to just give give head right. you know yes. what I mean so I do think that within our community we have different parameters around what we consider promiscuous I'm telling you every That's guy you normal. ask like if you ask a black man he'll be ma- way more mad that you gave somebody head suck the dick than if you had when I feel you like sex, I do think so too yeah, cause like, did you suck his dick? Especially if you sucked dick good, <laughs> girl. You better not have nothing to suck him. Don't admit to that shit if you did. <laughs> Wait, did he, did he, did he, did he swallow it? <laughs> Yo, you gotta be like no one. Think about it. Ahead of time, she swallowed it. That was like that, so, yes. If you think about that, she yeah. was sucking the next nigga's dick. Remember that song? Chicken, chicken, chicken head. It's all kind of dick sucking song. Yeah. It's like a playlist. Um, I'm gonna do a, a, a playlist on title for dick sucking song. <laughs> And then on Spotify. The, and then there's like the other playlist, which is you know downtown SWV. Oh, yeah. Well, now that sounds yeah. way prettier. Yeah, than, that does. Yeah, downtown is fun. You go downtown. You, you have remember, but remember when that song came out? It just at the time I it seemed so song. salacious. Yeah. Like downtown, <laughs> it compares to nothing <laughs> that's coming out now. Yeah, it's now. like people talking about eat my and pussy, eat my coochie. Right. Right. <laughs> you like, we, wow. thought that that, we thought that was racy back then. <laughs> downtown. downtown. Down. You know what I mean? She said, so down, down. Lay love. your head on my pillow was right. about him um, performing oral sex on her. Was it? Yep. Raphael Sadiq. Lay your head on my oh, pillow and just relax. Me. What? She <laughs> called me. That's call amazing. me too, because no, I'm joking. What? <laughs> she said, Raphael Sadiq called me. I said, call me too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll be co wives. <laughs> um, yeah, but look but at me. Like, what is it called? <laughs> the, things, the things that were like racy back then, or even when Salt and Pepper did that song, Let's Talk About Sex, and yeah. everyone was just like blushing. Like, it's oh my like, God, sex. That's almost like a church song now. Right. Oh, <laughs> right. So it's like tame. a PSA. Yeah. Yeah, you, you know, know what? I, when I was young, I used to be embarrassed when Color Me Bad, I Want to Sex You Up, would come on <laughs> in the car and I was with my parents. I'd be like, oh my God, what are they doing right, this to right, me right now? Right. <laughs> Ooh. But now, feel a little poke coming through. Right. <laughs> on you. Oh, oh, my God. And the harmonies on that. We were just talking about that. Because you know, in the beginning of the song, coming through. you know the beginning, like the intro of that song, where he's like, I wonder if she could tell I'm hard right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the song starts. <laughs> I don't know what they were talking about, because when it came out, I was kind of young. So that's, I was like, feel a little poke. You know, I didn't know. I okay. promise you. I was young. But you oh know what the God. problem with that song was? That it was a little poke. I mean, nobody had a problem. <laughs> I, I, want to I feel, feel a, a little poke. poke. Like, she should have said, panito. I feel a little poke coming through. I'm through. You know, she should have just walked that's away. That's you shimmy off to the next right. guy. Well, don't go dance with him. Right. It's a little Waste poke. Waste of time. They look <laughs> like they got little pokes, too. All, oh, all three of them. Look at you. See, now you guys are little dick shaming, and that's not right either. Uh, no, it's not right. It's not right. Uh, it's not right. The, um, but it's Mars real. has a little dick. Is it, oh, I that's right. <laughs> That uh, was. <laughs> let me tell you something. Because listen, so we're in we're in the writing room. We create these things, and I actually think I'm showing my ass now. It might have started as a joke. I think it did. I think it started as a joke. We Many knew that there was gonna a be a painting Many with a, one figure with three heads, and then I'm not. I won't take credit for it, but somebody said, and the dicks should start talking. And whoa, if these dicks could talk, <laughs> if these yeah. dicks could talk. <laughs> The touring show. Help me, oh, I'm burning. <laughs> but you know what? What I what I like about that moment <laughs> is like it sure is at the beacon. <laughs> um, what I like about that moment is it's real. It's like everybody ain't right. slang it. You know what I mean? Um, and I guess what he lacks in dick size, He's Mars like makes up for in personality. Right. Absolutely, right. he has a big personality. <laughs> <laughs> he makes her laugh. Good job, Mars. <laughs> Where's the dick? <laughs> Now, do you think that you could find everything that you would want in just one person? Mm. <laughs> I, I don't know. I Have don't you know, ever? Not from, not from my experience. Um, I think 
I think that that's really dangerous. It comes from like a whole Victorian notion of romance, you know, like that's when things started to flip. Mm -hmm. It used to be like, okay, I got my village of people, you know, <laughs> I have my ceremonial husband or wife or partner of whatever. And then I got my whole family, I got my friends, you know, I got my priest, right. got my, you know, got the farmer, right, the exactly. deal. And you just, and, and you could turn to your whole community to, to fulfill all your needs. And then there got to be this pressure on having this one single person that satisfies everything. And I think I'm that sure religion helped to create that mm -hmm. yeah, as well. Yeah, right? yeah. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's very possible. Mm -hmm. um, I think that many people end up living that way, you know, where they, they are able to find all of the things that they need in a, in a person. But um, I think that it's, it's you, you shouldn't put that pressure on anyone else. I know? agree. I agree. And I, one time when I... Um, was in therapy because there's no shame in doing that these At days. All. This is um, show is therapy. Oh, exactly. <laughs> when I was in therapy, I was um, seeing someone and talking about my relationship. Fabulous. <laughs> talking about my relationship hey, in the therapy session <laughs> and talking about how my partner, you know, the, just what my disappointments were. And I'll never forget her saying to me, like, you have to create a partner out of all of the people in your life mm -hmm. you know like look to uh get certain comforts from your female friends get certain comforts from your platonic male friends and get a certain comfort from your partner and it really did alleviate a lot of pressure yeah. that i was putting on this one person to come right. through in all of these ways you know and so i feel like maybe for some people it would be multiple lovers um or maybe just taking the pressure off that one lover yeah. fulfilling them and looking for guidance from their girlfriends and their you know co-workers that kind right. of thing because it's a recipe for disaster really you know if you're just you have all those expectations because of course another person can't make you happy right it's just like that's got to come from here and then you share that with someone else, sure you know? but i feel like it's cool that you said like put some of the pressure on your friends like your girlfriend or whatever oh Instead i'm tired of, of saying i'm tired of being your everything oh, shut <laughs> up. girl bye oh, Gigi's here now by the way hi, Gigi's hi, here. Gigi. Hey, i made it but i do i do feel like that's that's a nice thing to say other than being like all right just run to the next person because i'm not gonna lie i feel like with I say I'm in a relationship. I want him to be able to lean on me for certain things instead of being like, well, let me go confide in this girl that I met the other day. Like, no, nigga, you better tell me <laughs> anything you got a problem with. You I don't care if it's your boss. If it's that, like, I wouldn't want him to go to another woman and lean on her. But what about his friends, his male See, friends? See, that's okay. So yeah. he can't have female friends? I mean, not that he's, like, confiding in like that. No. Because then what, what am I but here But what for? if it's like a co-worker and they're talking about a, their Work? boss? That's different. What about a childhood friend that they've known since they were six Like, you know, old? I have childhood friends. I mean, I like, to talk about something like work or something, but when it's something close to the heart, like, if you're talking about family or something, like, just stuff like that, I feel like you're not supposed to let everybody in your business like that. Like, if I'm talking about something to do with my family, it might only be one other person or two people that I know. Right. You know what I mean? I'm not going to just go confide in the person that I see at work every day right. that I think is, is nice looking. But she said a childhood friend. No, no, childhood friend. I mean, I, if they've been friends from childhood and they ain't fucked this long. Like, <laughs> what if they did fuck when they were younger, but it's been 20 years since? 20 years mm. is a long time, but at the same time, like, <laughs> you see his dick. <laughs> Like, I don't well, know. 20 years, years ago, ago, it yeah. might have been a different oh, situation. Wow. Did, did his dick didn't fall have any hair on it? Grow again? Didn't have any hair on it. The balls didn't drop yet. <laughs> the balls didn't drop yet. Yeah. Well, shit, unless he got a new dick. If he replaced the dick that he put in her. You sure. know what I, re what, I, what I realized, though? Because I also feel like your partner is going to need somebody to talk about you with. Because they got to do that. They have to work it you out. You got to talk to your mother. <laughs> but what I realized is if you're friends with someone who is married... Their partner knows all your business. Just, right. just oh yeah, yeah, that. I know that. Except yeah. that, I, but that was a revelation for me. Right. Like a couple of years ago, I was like, "Wait a minute, old girl's husband knows my <laughs> business. I can tell because <laughs> when that person I was talking about yep. walked in the room, he he, he, he looked at her like, like, right? I was like, <laughs> she told him. You know what I mean? That or was a revelation. See you like you okay? Everything right, right. right. You like, like you need a drink? <laughs> I saw James walked in. Don't worry about it. There's like a difference between you know being emotionally unfaithful mm. 
and just having like really good friends, you know, that where you need to work something out before you bring it back home. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like I, I, would, I, yeah. I'm, I look for that. Like I want that kind of openness. Yeah. You know, in a relationship, I would want my boyfriend to have like a couple of female friends that he's cool with because I want to like that I'm cool with too. Yeah. And I don't have a problem with that. I'm but, looking at Gigi like Gigi, please say something that I just feel like that's a couple of female friends. Yeah. One of they had gonna end up on his lap. That's not true. I think of all the guy friends and all of his female friends. I'm one of them. How many of them did he fuck though? Like not not Angela, but other (laughs) ones. Oh, she was the exception. Oh my gosh. I'm sure he has other females around that he didn't fuck. I'm pretty sure. But he has females around that he did fuck that he calls friends. I'm pretty sure. But you know that, but okay, but that's a perfect example. Like, you know that he would call me and talk about like stuff and you didn't have a problem with it. call you and talk about me. Yeah. Let me That's what I meant when I said stuff. Let me (laughs) You know what? You know what? The reason I think, uh, at least I'm saying this on paper, right? I don't know if this is real. I haven't really tried it out, but the reason I think I like the idea of my partner having a good female friend is because we are different sometimes down the gender line, you know, and I feel like I've learned a lot about men and how they walk through the world from my male friends, like checking in with them and saying, am I crazy for X, right. Y, and Z? And they're like, gotta, yeah. girl, you are. You know what I mean? Once like again, if you did that gets- to me, you know what I mean? Like sometimes mm-hmm. it does come uh, about our tribes around gender. And if there's a friend of mine who can enlighten me in terms of, yes, you want to approach the person as an individual, but we are conditioned based on gender sometimes. And my male friends can be like, oh, girl, I don't know. He you better know? have a sister. I know he got a mother. <laughs> but so you, came out have, of a so you you don't have guy friends if you're talking to somebody? Like when I, my last real, real relationship, most of my men friends was his friends. No. But I'm talking about your own friends. Yeah, I have no. my own friends, but they wasn't guys. And like, you the, don't think that's a problem? <clears throat> and my guy friends wasn't like, wasn't like that at all. And he knew them. Like it was different. Like they have relationships too. So that'd be something. But not just like a guy, like y'all said, a guy that I had sex with many well, years ago. Well, no, I'm not ago. talking about that now. I'm just saying a friend. <clears throat> oh yeah, and definitely. I mean, yeah, like somebody that I knew, but he would know them. Like I need to know if I'm dating a guy that he can be friends with women without wanting to fuck them and have mm-hmm. platonic relationships. Yeah. No, yeah, because I think cool. it's a problem it if men that. don't have women friends. That means that yes. anybody that they interact with that's a woman right. is somebody they fucking. That's, that's right. cool, but I don't want this woman to know all of my business. Not all your business, but like, but if what he's if, confiding, what if he's her? like, uh, what should I? Get? Get her for Christmas. <laughs> That's different. <laughs> if we talking about gifts for me, you could talk to anybody. <laughs> what are you talking about? What if, um, you know, there's an issue within relation within the relationship where they're bickering over whatever, and he brings it to the mutual female friend to get her insight on where he should go as far as you know the situation like, see my problem is not necessarily always the guy it's mad grimy girls out here <laughs> right and I'm just being a hundred though like they're like uh uh-uh, she's fucked up you know what you need to do you need to leave her and like, come over to my house you get what and I'm we'll saying? talk about and it at 12 midnight and females do that they're trying to hook him up with they, they other friends you get what I'm saying mm-hmm. and I've, I've never had that experience well her. I've seen you it know, done so many to Tamika, times Tamika won't put you through these same you get what I'm saying now you know I always told you to holla at my homegirl <laughs> See, most times, when, about you. most times when I date a guy and he has women friends, I'm cool with them too. And like, if they go to her, he'll be like, you know what? I told her since she said I was wrong, so I'm calling. No, you. but some some women are cool, and you can. But there's a lot that's not, and that's what make me feel like I wouldn't want him to just be confiding about our relationship with another woman. Like, talk to me. Yeah, like, like don't confide and be like, you know, Larry ass pussy was whack. What should I do? Uh, my pussy would never like, be whack. But, you <laughs> no. <know. laughs> <laughs> Today's episode of Lip Service is brought to you by ShowerCap.com. Do you wash your hair every day? I didn't think so. Well, let me introduce you to ShowerCap. Redesigned for form and function, Shower Cap not only looks better, it works better. It's made from hydrophobic nanotech material that never gets moldy and it dries instantly. Shower Cap is 100% waterproof and has a super soft, luxurious feel. Better yet, the cap was tested on all hair types and lengths so you can be sure it will protect yours. I can't stand what I'm going to get in the shower and my shower cap is still a little bit damp from when I had a shower earlier in the day because of course, I shower twice a day. Now, if you want to get the best shower cap in the game, go to www. Showercap.com and use the code Angela for ten percent off. That's S H H H three H's O W E R Cap dot com. Showercap because you actually need this.
All right, now let me ask um, both <laughs> Rada and Issa. Um, from your own personal standpoint in your own life, if you had to choose from one person from She's Gotta Have It, okay, that Nola Darling was dating, is it going to be Jamie, Greer, Mars, or Opal? And Mars. Not- <laughs> you would pick Mars. Okay, Wait, you, mean, you mean that we would want to c- continue? In your the real life, who would you date? Who would I date? Mars. You had to Out pick of one. All of them. Mm-hmm. Oh wow! It would be Mars. For Why me. is that? Um, is Opal really, to me is a, a grown ass woman, and I appreciate that about it. But for me, laughter is so important. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. L- learning how to diffuse by laughter, and also Mars. When that thing went down with her graffiti, like he, he was, was so pro, he was ready to pop off. Yeah. But he was so proactive about helping to solve her problem. So he had the humorous side, and then he had like a really. I feel like out of the three men, not so much Opal, but out of the three men, he wanted to possess her the least. Mm-hmm. You know, it was Opal seems up that like he was right... dating her friend first, though. I... Mm. Yeah, but he did ask the friend for money. <laughs> he asked the friend for money for her, so I guess you know that's over. But that's still awkward because they it still <laughs> come up in their awkward. friendship. Yeah, yeah. Was she? Uh, Clarinda does bring up the G code, the girl mm. code. Like, yeah. oh, you you yeah. kind of like forgot that. about I that. I like that y'all did yes. that because it seemed like the elephant in the room that nobody was going to say anything about. But then she came out and was like, "Well, you know, that was my man. Like, what's up?" Do you think, but here's the thing though, do you think Clarinda really wanted to be with Mars or she was more upset that her, that friend, her friend. Her friend did that to her. That yeah. Was yeah. Did, you, did you see oh, she's got it? Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. You got it. It's you got really a Netflix good. and chill it up. I mean, I know, Maybe they're, they're just time. like the opposites that attract, which is why, you know. Clarinda and Mars? I don't know. Nah, <laughs> do they didn't. Like, I feel like Mars <laughs> and, no, and Nola have a little opposite or track stuff okay, going on. Okay, I can see that. She's not living with her sister in the projects. Not that there's a judgment on that right. but um but he judge. travels by bike she does not right. you know what i mean like there's an age difference mm-hmm. he's goofy as fuck like he's really fun is. but low-key he's really he's goofy. immature a little yes. bit i, I know can't see where he takes his role yeah. like, <laughs> i can't see him with that with the one i'm sorry i forgot clarinda okay, clarinda so I i'm gonna fill gg in and for our listeners who maybe didn't see she's gotta have it yet but i know y'all all gonna watch it now it's so good <laughs> so um She's got to have it, right? Nola Darling has four different lovers. Three of them are men. One of them is a woman. They all know about each other, basically. Uh, And so they all have very extremely different personalities. So Mars is the one that's like fun, but he's probably the least established out of all of them. So yeah, yeah. he's the youngest, but he's fun. Youngest. Yeah. I mean, and I felt this way. In the original movie, mm-hmm. I felt like Mars was the person I would want to kick it with. You know what I he, mean? He put her panty, he, her he panties on his, on his head. head. <laughs> panty man. Right. So, and Issa, you say Mars like, also. Well, no. I mean, this is the thing is that I kind of wouldn't be with any of them. I would. <laughs> oh. I, I mean. You have I, to pick one, though. I know. I do. I know. Well, I'm kind of. This is a thing where you kind of see a little bit of evolution with this character through the series. And. So Greer, that's oh, what I would have said. Well, yeah. so I like Greer. Greer. I mean, what I would pick really is I was like, I just want Opal to be a man because I'm straight. But that's <laughs> Opal how I would. Is the yeah, best she's the most how, secure. That's how I would do it because she's like just dope. But um, I, I feel like Greer actually is. He starts to shift. He starts to kind of soften and mm-hmm. see her. You know? Yeah, and and you can kind of feel that you know maybe. If the whole arrogance thing really is this act that he's yeah, been putting right. on all these years and that, you know, there's actually something that is really sweet and giving, yeah. you know, and where they somehow can really connect in terms of the visuals with him being a photographer and right. her being a painter and that they actually might have this real connection. Like so, the artist. Yeah. You know what? You know what? It's funny. A lot of the feedback I see online, social media about Greer is people think that he's low key gay, and I was just like, really? Just because his he, outfit, because he's a he's a metrosexual, <laughs> but he but he dresses like Prince, right? And yeah. Prince loved him so much. Like, right. like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like you can say pussy it's, here. Okay, pussy. <laughs> um, it's just it's just so funny to me that in 2017, 2018, like a guy. Folding his legs or 
you know, being greased down or crawling across the floor like a lion. <laughs> right. See, I feel like you can laugh. You said the laughter thing. I know. I feel like you can laugh at him because as soon as he would have gotten off for it, I would have like, <laughs> All right, now that brings me to my next thing. What's the corniest thing a guy has ever done in the bedroom with you? Gigi, we'll start with you. Oh, that is That funny. you was like, because Greer actually oh. crawls across the floor and he's like, Arr, like Yeah, a, like, Arr. I got a lion in my pocket, yeah. baby. And it's ready to roar. Ready to roar. <laughs> And I thought that was so corny. I was like, if a guy did that to me, it might just like completely. He's like, no man's going to hit it how I'm about to hit it right now. Yeah, no. No. I don't know. Corny would probably be to just talk a whole bunch of game and not be able to back it up. I think that's corny to me. Right. You know? Yeah, you should never talk a lot of shit. It's yeah, just corny. Guys, yeah. And guys have a problem with that. Like they, you know, prior to getting with you, they tell you all these things they're going to do to you and with you and then... <laughs> Crickets. One and done. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Um, so you're trying to say they should, um, what is it, undersell and over deliver? Yeah, there you go. Uh-huh. That's right. it. They should try doing that. <laughs> but then you can't also under um, undersell it because then you'll be like, yeah, it's going to be okay. Like, my dick is regular. You got to go. <laughs> I mean, but just don't, it's you fun. don't go that hard with saying, you know, how great you are. Yeah. If really, in our reality, you ain't really all that great. All right. I think <laughs> too much conversation great. about the sex, like, this is going to be yeah. the best sex you've ever had. How about you just shut up? <laughs> shut up and put up. Okay. Because those are the corny moments to me when someone's like talking to me while we you you like it. How, whose is this? And it's just like oh my you God. really want to know whose mine. it is. It's mine. It's yes. Jesus. you like, what do you want me to say? I'm going to let you hold it. Right. <laughs> You're renting this for the hour. It's yours. So it's yours temporarily in this moment. So the talking, the corny talking, I could do without. Yeah. Oh, man. I mean, I just had a flashback. <laughs> I mean, you know, when you're in a relationship for a while, it was like maybe the second year or something, and you're kind of looking for things to like spice it up, mm-hmm. right? And I was laying on the bed, and then how did he just like come out of the hallway and into the bedroom, butt naked? Whoa. With, mm-hmm. with like, a neon bow tie on. What? Neon. Where, how did? Why do you have it? I, I don't know. <laughs> From his job. He thought, he thought that, that was like. <laughs> I don't know. Somehow it's gonna just make me, you know, just jump out of my panties. So what'd you do? I was just like, that looks really stupid. I did not laugh. Why are you doing this? Yeah, like, Hold on, I gotta take a picture for the gram. Right. <laughs> oh my right oh there. My I mean, I feel for him because he was trying. But no, it didn't He work. tried it, it and he failed. He made an effort. It, it did the opposite <laughs> mm. for me. So was that it for you? No. No, we, we tried. We made, we, but yeah, eventually. It just was, <laughs> that was a sign, maybe. Yeah. He's like family, but I think we never really had a full kind of sexual chemistry. You know what I mean? Yeah, both side will kill it every yeah, time. Yeah, <laughs> fucked it up. Dry, I, I did it this one guy family. and he had uh, so the first time I went to his house I had never been there before and this is when I was in college and it was like you know um, you know we were home for the holidays so I went to his house and he had a water bed <laughs> <laughs> damn I forgot about that. that was mad crazy <gasps> I've never seen a water bed before in my life they still make the them now listen I don't know 80s. why he had a water bed Dinner, like, I've dinner, never seen one. Dinner, I didn't even know they existed. Dinner, dinner. Mm-hmm. Right. And I can't swim. Ready to ride this wave, anyway, baby. <laughs> I had left. So I come into the bedroom and he had. I'm embarrassed. I don't want to no, say that. No, you got to finish. You have to finish well, it. he had on a leopard, like, speedo <laughs> or something, wow. underwear. No. And he was, like, laying on the water bed. <laughs> it was like a movie. Like, like, Deuce right. Bigelow. <laughs> no. His body was, like, By the way, waves. why does nobody use water beds anymore? Cause they break. Cause it's fucking stupid. <laughs> it's probably a health hazard, yeah. and it's probably mad bacteria in that yeah. shit. No, no, I don't want it. I'm just wondering because I forgot. But you know what? He anybody out there? He got a probably water bed. thought yeah. the water bed was going to help. You know, make With you feel. Well, that shit was squishing help around. <laughs> Hold on, no, no, I want to try that. I got to find a water bed. Uh, I want to have sex on a water I bed. I want to make love on a water yeah. bed. Yeah. You're going to get some lettuce tonight, girl. <laughs> how was it? And you got to just play emails. some type of like ocean music or something. But how was, yeah. like, how was fucking on a water I bed? I didn't fuck him on the water bed. It was mad. Awkward. Oh, because yeah, he had on a leopard <laughs> right. speedo. That's what really ruined it. It wasn't just the, I was, first, I don't know where you even would get one from. <laughs> a speedo or a water bed? A water bed, because it had to, like, a vintage, I don't Sleepies. know where you even get that from. Sleepies. 
does not sell water beds. <laughs> like Playboy surplus. Yes. Here's another debate we had. Mm-mm. Okay, Gigi, are you more the type of person who likes somebody more in the beginning and then it wears off, or don't like somebody so much but they really grow on you and then you fall in love? Uh, I think I don't like them at first. Thank you. And then, <laughs> and then it, they, they grow on me and I eventually fall in love. Persistence Yo, overcomes resistance, baby. We've been arguing about yeah, this for because. years. <laughs> really? There has, there has been a few that I thought like, oh my God, he's amazing and then womp, womp, womp. Right. But there's been more of, ugh, I guess. And right. And eventually like, oh, I oh. love him. <laughs> and then he's like, bitch, get out of here. You didn't like me when I... <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Rada? Um, I'm a Libra, so I I fall in love like twenty thousand times a day, yes. <laughs> and and then somewhere around there goes, oh oh, you don't really like this person. This is not gonna <laughs> fare well in the real world. But like, yeah, like in the very beginning, like I just. A, a laugh or something about them makes me go, who oh, is this person? Right. I need to know them. I need to be around them. And then, you know, the reality, I see like an ashy foot or a skid Ooh. mark or something that makes a me leopard go, did you, just say a, did, did, did you just say a skid mark in his drawers? Yeah. Listen. Ooh. Where else would it be? The toilet or something. Ooh. Like, no, you know, maybe. No. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. The carpet. <laughs> no. I've, I've had that experience. You saw skid marks in someone's underwear? Yeah. It was, it, it was just, mm-hmm. I didn't really get a good look. I just... Was you being a cougar or it was, was this a, a grown man? This was this was like years ago. And or maybe I guess he was, I was being a cougar. Okay, see, I knew it. I knew he don't know how to wipe Walmart, himself. He's too young. Know, real quickly, Walmart sells water beds. And there's, also, they do. <laughs> you look it up, also, and there's also a place called Waterbed Outlet. How much is it? How much oh, is it? Oh, 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 for the holidays? $2,000. Wow, he was balling. Jesus. With free shipping. I'm going to oh. put alkaline water in my I'm shit. I'm getting a water bag. <laughs> Y'all think I'm playing. It's, it's, it's like the whole wooden <laughs> frame. Perrier. The, Perrier. Oh, it, oh, it includes Perrier. everything. Yeah. It's a whole bedroom Ooh. set. Sparkling box. The would appreciate that. Y'all keep playing with me. I'm getting a water bag. Okay, sorry. And a Side leopard note, speedo. <laughs> it's probably good for your back. No. Is it? To, to be, can you imagine just like how hard it is to get to sleep? That rhythm is the whole probably be so good. Good. so good on the water bed. You'd be like, <laughs> you go like, like this, the bed go like this. Yeah. Vertigo, when you feel like you're moving in your oh my god! Take me a drama me and go to sleep. Have dreams about being on the Titanic or a slave ship? Slave ship, more like it nowadays. All right, so Rada, you say you're more of a like fall in love, but then. Like, 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 like a lot in the beginning. And then, I mean, I've had situations where I get to know the person. I go through right. those stages but more where so. it's a big emotion in right. the very beginning. And then it kind of changes into something else, you know, mm-hmm. but yeah. What about you, Issa? Yeah, I'm, I'm the same way. I just fall like that. Mm. I, f- I mean, sometimes people like slowly creep up where I'm like, oh, let me check this person out. But, you know, it's really only been one person that I was ever with where... At first, I was kind of like, you corny. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, a couple of scotches later, I'm like, oh, I'm enjoying talking to you. Yeah. And you then, corny, but you fine. <laughs> a couple of scotches later, <laughs> anybody might make it look good. good. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, yeah, I, I would say that I'm definitely, I, I, I just, I see it right away. And also because I think I see right over people's shortcomings. I don't even notice them. Wow. It's deep. It's like, I mean, I think that really, that really happened, like, you know, with this one person actually who I didn't really like at first, I was just kind of like, okay, now if I'm liking you, then, you know, I actually am finding that I'm not even annoyed with you ever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I'm just kind of recognizing that certain things about you are just your personality. And it's not really something that, you know, I should trip on. Right. You know, so that's, that's my problem. Cause obviously sometimes people just aren't right for you and then you're not compatible. And then and in the I beginning, you're blind that. to all that. I, I think we know, you know, they say when a relationship ends, it actually ended. Like say a relationship was the, was the, the length of two years and it ends. They say the relationship ended a year ago, mm-hmm. but you just haven't. Oh, uh, yeah. I, wanna, <laughs> I think for women, that's more right. Than for style. men, I think for women, we be out of a relationship before the man knows that we're out of it. <laughs> right. Mm. right. Mm. I, I told you I was done with this nigga girl. Because <laughs> they don't know that we're, they're messing up and they think we're forgiving them. and we're But we're really like mentally like, okay. Right. That's cool. Two months later, Put come home. Put that in the book. 
Right. Put this in the Nothing, book. Put that in the gone. book. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. We and do then, make mental notes. And then by the time we're already kind of recuperated because we've been dealing with it and knowing it's about to happen and like going through it. So that by the time it's time to break up, you already done broke up mm-hmm. and went through all the emotions. And then guys are just off guard like, oh, mm-hmm. shit, I didn't see that coming. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, that happened with my ex-boyfriend, the one that I was with for five years. Oh, yeah, yeah. I knew I was, and he did so much shit. I knew I was going to break up with him. I just wasn't ready to do it right away. Mm. But then by the time I was ready, I was, it was a clean break, no going back. And he really thought we were going to work it out. And I'm right. like, you Ben was over it. That's but when why. you, when you were, re- when you knew you wanted to break, you knew the relationship was over, but didn't break up with him. What caused you to stick around? I didn't really know. It. I did, but I didn't. Like, there's a lot of things that I felt like he was doing and he didn't stop doing them. And I just wasn't ready to break up with him yet. So, but emotionally, I was like kind of distancing myself <laughs> until I was prepared. Cause it's like you could either break up with somebody and then like just be away from them, but still be not over it. But I was like kind of getting it over it while I was still with him. Oh, wow. That was a weird thing. He had no, he had no clue. Yeah, he thought, listen, he was chilling, thinking that like we were going to break up. And then, you know, when we did break up, he thought that I would like forgive him eventually. And I just never did. But that's because I went through it all for like months. Yeah. But don't you think, don't you think men do that too? Where they'll they'll be done with you and yeah, then, that, no, they'll be I messing with another in, woman and then hanging in there. And when I you think find men act like assholes it's over. until you break up with them because they don't really want to break up with you. They don't want to yeah, be that. Yeah, no. Guy. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, they instead get another of, woman. Instead of breaking up with you, they go out and find. Yeah, them. they'll get another woman, and when you break up is when you find out. When you find out about the woman and you so mad and you confront him, mm-hmm. and you're like, I'm gonna leave you. There. That's when y'all break up. Right. But he's not gonna just he's be like, not gonna hey, come to you and I'm fucking this bitch over here. Like no, he's not, not gonna, gonna be like it's not working. I don't want to be with you. He's just gonna fuck up until you break up with him. That's right. I have a question for you all um, about the concept of cheating. Like I feel like a lot of women have kind of when they go into relationships, they just have an expectation that a man is going to cheat. She does. She really? does. Yeah, I think I think, think majority of like, men cheat. Like majority. I'm, I'm not gonna say a hundred percent, but maybe like ninety eight. Because <laughs> you took a poll. Point nine. You went nine, behind nine, like nine, <laughs> You took you had Yeah, you know, board. I did the poll, and what I came up with was 98.9. Uh, I don't go in with that expectation. I mean, I don't want, I don't go into a relationship like, yes, I want him to cheat on me. It's not like that. It, sure. No, but I think when I go into a relationship, like, you know, a lot of men cheat. Mm. I'm not saying, and I'm not okay with it at all. So, you know, I try to be on my. P's and Q's, you know what I mean? <laughs> Inspector. Like, you yeah. have no female friends. You can't <laughs> like you tell can't. nobody about nothing. <laughs> because talk that, about me to your friends. Listen, you know what's they interesting? They fuck majority of their friends. We had Kevin Hart on, right? The Breakfast Club. Ooh. And he talked a lot about... Another unfaithful man. And by the way, I, anyway, I didn't see that coming when that happened the way that it did with Kevin Hart. Mm. Only because, I mean... I did. I really didn't. Because <laughs> of his humorous persona. Well, also because he went through so much before with his ex-wife. He didn't have right. to get married. Right. So I thought that he had just kind of like, you know, gotten over it. But anyway, after the interview, the guys, um, Envy and Charlamagne, were saying to me, they were like, why do women want to know why men cheat? We don't even know why we cheat. Mm. It's in their nature. They can't help it. But that's also like an excuse for them, too, I feel yeah. like. It's like giving them Always. an excuse. Like, it's just, don't ask us why. We don't know why. And We're it's just not stupid. even a reason. You're not even giving a reason. You just said, we don't know why. I know someone who <laughs> said, just to, Gigi, to your point, um, he was just, it was almost like he was like a seven, uh, a five percenter, you know, street knowledge. <laughs> and he's like, man, cheat cause our organs is on the outside. You know what I'm saying? And your organs is on the inside. And the outside organ is always seeking the inside. Or, you know what I mean? Like, did you work for Wu Tang too? No. <laughs> <laughs> I do love the Wu. <laughs> but that he was kind of like explaining in a way by nature. But I do think men, cheat because some men of course generalize, generalizing here Belvedere <laughs> some men do cheat I think because they are influenced by their social set I and they so very have friends who make them so. feel like mm-hmm. really you gonna lock it down with that girl just her cause they be <laughs> having a be trash girl and then they see they man <laughs> it be <laughs> facts though <laughs> like they be having a trash girl and then they see they man all happy and in love with the perfect <laughs> person that they wish they could be with so now they like now y'all uh, sound like some bitter men cause <laughs> men will, do that though. cause do women do don't that. we do that too like, aren't you influenced by your friends also? I never tell my, my friends, like, oh, he's... Not so- that you tell them, but I'm just saying, like, the do, girls that do you hang that, out with, though. when your friends are single, it's, like, fun. It looks like more fun sometimes to you. Yeah. 
than when you know what I'm saying and yeah. I, I'm sure it's that way with men too I mean, <laughs> when I was, listen, but men are like that when their friends not even single. Yeah, that's you what I'm saying. Still like, because men are married and not sing- and and they, and, they and they still are single. They are like, come on, we going to the strip club. They're like, single. She's oh, married. She's I'm not. not. Married. Right. Oh, she's, she's not married. letting you go to the strip club. She's crazy. Like, oh, that's another good Netflix series for you. She's married. I'm not. <laughs> What's that's, that thing? Or That'd be a good series. Single married. Married. Single single married. married. Single married man. SMM. Single married man. <laughs> single married man. Married like no that. ring. Oh, you know him. He's a single married man. <laughs> I feel. I feel like sounds like majority. I don't, I, I, I don't think this is necessarily a mature man, but I. I sometimes I wonder if men make choices based on what their friends think. Mm, I, yes, you know what I mean because I've. Um, I'm just speaking from personal experience. I've always been like a thick girl and the funny girl. And I thought you I said mean, a. Dick girl. That's I'm about so to say, girl. I've been a dick girl too. Okay. No, hold on. <laughs> dick girl stands up. Dick girl's united. But I've been that girl who in high school, a certain guy will like me, but because his social set expects him to date a certain type of girl, mm-hmm. he won't, he they might influence. want to step to me in the cloak of night or what mm. have you um, because he's so influenced by the men in his life. And sometimes I wonder when that I see men so true, choose actually. women, are they choosing them because they really want to be with that woman or because the woman fits the image right. of what they yeah. friends, For their friends. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, that's not necessarily an evolved man or peer a very pressure, mature man. Pressure, peer but peer I pressure. know a lot of men who do that. I mean, no, you're look right. at our industry, they a lot of times I think, you know, uh, men pick women based on their image. And These hoes be different. looking all the same. Just say it. <laughs> like ants. <laughs> Today's episode of Lip Service is also brought to you by Canvas People. Christmas is coming up, and that means family gatherings, seeing beloved friends, and another year of celebrating unique traditions. It's a time to make memories that you'll all cherish for years to come. So preserve those cherished memories with a special deal from CanvasPeople.com. Now, I actually bought my brother a CanvasPeople.com picture. What I did was I took an old picture from when me and him were little kids, and then I had it blown up from Canvas canvas people and then they actually restored it because I guess the quality wasn't like the best but they made it look so good and I love it he's going to be so excited so for those of you who don't know canvaspeople.com is an easy to use photo to canvas service it takes your favorite photo memories and turns them into beautiful artwork instead of snapping that beautiful photo and you just let it rot on your cell phone or you just post it on the gram you can bring it to life and put it on your walls or give it to someone you love as a great gift like I did for my brother all canvases are of the highest quality and they're made here in the U.S. and let's be real we all need some beautiful original artwork in our homes plus everything ships fast and with great attention to detail and with over 1 million happy customers served you can buy with confidence normally 11 by 14 canvases are priced at $69.99 well right now as a limited time offer you can get one free 11 by 14 canvas and just pay shipping to get this amazing deal just go to canvaspeople.com and and use offer code Angela in the cart at checkout. That's C-A-N-B-A-S people.com promo code Angela. Do you feel like for both of you, do you feel like men like you because of what you do sometimes too? Oh. I would say so. Groupy love. I would right. say They'd so. They'd be like, oh, you know she yeah. didn't wrote and she yeah, wrote I for mean, Empire like, and she it. wrote... <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you know Spike? Oh, yeah. Right. Let's go to a game. <laughs> <laughs> or just, you know, because I also, I sing as well. So it's like, you know, feel like in some ways that actually is something I have to get around because if someone has what we call a talent crush mm-hmm. on you, mm-hmm. talent crush, then they might not actually be down for who you are oh. as a person. You know, that's what I really love in, in at the end of She's Gotta Have It, you know, she comes out and she's got her head wrap on. She's got on her T-shirt. You know, she's not like dued up for these men when she when she first comes out. And I just love that she's just like, just take me as I am. Mm-hmm. You know, like I don't have to be flashy for you. I don't have to put on anything for you. Yeah. You know? like, this, but that's this part of way. that talent question. As an artist, that shit look cool, too. <laughs> when she's like doing art in the house and she yes, comes in because you don't right. expect her to be done it that's how you're supposed right. to look but also a, DeWanda Wise is like gorgeous yeah, she, she is so gorgeous. gorgeous she doesn't even need she a drop so of makeup no, nothing and nothing. every time nothing. she smokes a joint it makes me want to smoke too it's triggering, okay. <laughs> it's triggering. It triggers that desire but FYI you smoke every day anyway so I don't oh. know what the difference is don't blame it on you don't blame it on you she'll blame it on I'm not gonna lie like I quit 
And then I saw Nola, wow. and I was like, nah, nah, you know, I got to roll up Right, just quick. like the drinking. Like, today's yeah, yeah. your last day, right? Yeah, no, tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> you know right, what? I'm stepping out, I'm stepping out. Oh, yeah. Bye. Thank you so much. Um, All right, Issa Davis. Bye. 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 Enjoy. Yeah. Okay, have a, have a <laughs> good time. Um, I used to do stand-up comedy for a number of years. Yes, mm-hmm. you did. And I had to... <laughs> I was like, girl, so yes, you did. Uh-huh. And I had to, like, yeah. I, you know... It's very flattering when men are like, you know, you know very into you and stuff, and okay. and then you then you catch it. You go, oh, you just saw me perform. That's who you like. That's who you might be feeling, you know. Um, but and I remember even when I was doing like a lot of theater and plays, all these fine ass actors be like yeah you know we should talk we should let's go out for tea and I'm like yeah all right, good and then after a while you're like in the middle of the what you think is a date you're like oh he thinks like I'm gonna put him in a play or get him a role introduce right. him to Spike or whatever like there are those people which is why I think I tend to not date people in right. the arts or interested mm-hmm. in the arts who aren't impressed who, who can be supportive of you in what you want to do but they're not like ask you all these questions about yeah. what you do. You know what I mean? That's so annoying because when I leave work, I don't even really want to talk about work. <laughs> Just yeah. tell you, I do not feel like it. I don't feel like... And then it's so awkward if you're like dating somebody and they need a favor. Like, I wouldn't date somebody uh, that needs favors right, from me. Right, right. No. But you know, I have a question. So, if you don't date guys in the industry and stuff like that or you, you try not to, where do you meet these guys that you do end up dating? Girl, uh uh-uh. So you single? I'm very, very yeah. single. Uh, she's like, girl, I mean, I'm looking for her. You know, like, uh, I recently, you know, I spend time between New York and Baltimore now, so it's, that's a whole new gene mm-hmm. pool that I've been kind of exploring. <laughs> gene pool. Um, <laughs> but it's, it, it can be tough because a lot of times I feel like I've, um, I don't tell people what I do because I just want them to meet me. Even okay. when I lived in LA at one point, you know, you go to parties and people are like, so what do you do? What do you do? And I was oh, so LA. LA. That's all they say. And I would just be like, oh, I'm trying to figure things out. And if they walk away from me, then that's somebody I don't even fuck with anyway. Next time you gotta be like, I smack people that ask me, what do I do? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. No, it's... All right, now, ladies, have y'all ever Thank been you. in a in a situation in a room where you saw more than one person you dated? <laughs> mm, yeah, I, you, like at a party, a yeah. GG. I have. And how do? I just like. You just, just like. Hey, how you doing, guys? I bothered by it. I just okay. You know what? I feel like. A, it happened to me a lot more when I was younger. Right. You'd be like, yeah, I don't fuck four people in yeah. here. Because <laughs> it'll be like, I'll be in a club, right? And it'll be like, like say, like when I lived in Miami, that's very small. Like, right. it's only but one club that night or whatever. <laughs> that everybody so you goes see, to. you'll see more than one person that you're dealing with. And me, I never dealt with those situations very well. Mm-hmm. At the end of the night, it was always somebody cursing me out on my text. <laughs> like, or, how? Yeah. Cause Do you I, ever judge yourself? Like, God damn, I, pick I can't. One. We have fuck five people in here. <laughs> you know what? That's um, a lot, Angela. I'm probably, <laughs> I'm probably older than you young ladies, a lot older. And I look back on those days with pride. I do. <laughs> I go, yeah, those days was fun. When were, remember when you was in the club and it was like four motherfuckers up in that shit that you had. Like you, you lived your life. You lived. You were living. So I, I have no shame about that now. Like I look back like. You be like John, me, Jack, Jack, right, me, John. Right. Now you all got a lot in common. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're sick. You guys have a lot. You're sick. You shared some of the same things. Mainly my see, body. Yeah. See, now I go out and I, I'll be lucky if I find somebody in the club that I even think is attractive. Right. <laughs> I'm like, I'll be sitting there like, oh my God, all these fucking lame. But you're not going to really probably meet nobody in the club now. No, not that. Nah. Let's keep it real. No, but back in the day, like oh, when that I, was, that's I'm what I am now. Back then, you know. That's what I'm saying. So where are we going to meet these, like, where do you meet these guys? That's why I asked for that. You know, like, you know why else I think I'm single, honestly, is because I made this declaration that sometimes I'm like, why did you say this? It was like, I don't want to deal with anybody that I don't like, if that makes any sense. Like, yeah. You know, like, I feel like we meet people all the time, but to really like someone, Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about being in love. I'm not talking about, like, necessarily, oh, I want to fuck them, but, like, you just like them. I like like being around you. And I made that declaration, and I don't like nobody. You you don't. Gigi, what about, are you still single? Yes. (laughs) 
<laughs> you're enjoying do you it. like anybody? Well, you're enjoying it, though. It's kind of boring, it's actually. Are you bored? Do you know why I'm bored? Because I'm not dating. Mm. But remember, this remember is Gigi. This is Gigi's fault, though. I'm gonna tell you why it's Gigi's fault. Because I'm a hermit crab. Yeah, I'll be like Gigi. Now, mind you, I only go out for like work stuff. But some days, like I might have like a day, and Ange is out of town, or you know what I mean, Paris out of town, and I'm like, all right, Gigi, let's go, you know, mingle with some fellas. Yeah. And she'll be like, fellas. well, she's an old, she's an old <laughs> Jewish. Yeah. Woman. yeah, let's go hang out with some fellas, right? And Gigi's like, well, I just made mac and cheese, and I got my my onesie my on. Right. I, I might have to fart like, later. I don't know if I want to be around people. She just sent me a picture with a wine glass. I don't want to like, fart in my onesie. <laughs> I'm like, yo, my friends are boring. Like, but you know what? Don't you feel like, I'm not going to ask you your age, but I feel like that's when you really, like, to me, are grown, is when you can be home and you have your Netflix and your little drink. And See, your I can do that, but don't sit whatever. here and talk about you bored. If uh, I'm like, come on, no, let's go have drinks. You're absolutely right. Because okay. you can't be like, well, I'm single, but I'm not really making no effort I'm not to. Going out. Because girl, I'm I had so much but fun you know last to go to the night. Club. You should have came with the night before last. I wasn't there. Oh, girl, I came in the house like five in the morning. I ain't I did that home. since I was. Gloria came in the house and I was leaving for work. <laughs> I, was I walked early. in and it was just like. But then she said, I'm not going out anymore. You text me that. Wait, y'all live together. One of those drinks. Well, she's about to get. Her yeah. own place, but she's been staying. I got my house, so yeah. I'll stay there. Yeah, she's been oh, living with me. <laughs> oh my god, it's, it's so, not boring. It's it is so funny. Going on. Two boy chicks. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna lie. It used to be so much funner because I was crazier. Fun is not a word. Fun is definitely a word. <laughs> if, if, uh, if conversate is okay, sex funner. on the first date. <laughs> 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 I just um, was talking to somebody. Who I just randomly, you know, one of our interns was talking to me and she was telling me how she met this guy and they had sex on the first date and she's still with him to this day and it's like three years later. <laughs> I was like, that is amazing. Because you always hear the stars like... stars were aligned. You always... You can have sex on the first night and still be together. Why is that so like mythical? I know, but people always act like, oh, a guy's not going to like you if that happens. And I've never believed that. I haven't. I don't either. And that's also on that premise of like, women, you should withhold your sex to keep him interested mm. but what if you want to have sex thank you like why no. is it always about the men and trying to trick, trick him script? into like I'm gonna tell Steve Harvey you said that <laughs> <laughs> come on Steve Harvey you and your mustache come for me uh, the three of us could fight uh, <laughs> do, you, do you remember this movie um, <laughs> two can play that game yes, yes. let me tell you something mm. that movie there's so many jewels in that film I gotta watch that again mm -hmm. and there's a moment in the film and I was thinking about it when you were talking earlier where she has she has an issue with Morris Chestnut's character. Vivica Fox has an issue with Morris Chestnut's character. And her girls are like, what they all come up to her like, what girl, what, what, what? And she turns to the camera and she says, Don't tell your girls what's going on. Ooh. Don't tell them all your business because from this moment on, they're gonna see him through that prism of like he fucked up. Facts. And I was sitting there taking notes like this movie really did some gems. And in that movie, they slept together on the first date. Yep. Right. So right, right. you know, there's no. I don't think there's a rule necessarily about. You know, when I saw that movie on nine eleven, um, and I won't forget that because I was I was living in Jersey City and I could see the smoke like above my apartment. Oh my god! And there was nothing to do. You couldn't go anywhere. So. I went to the movie theater. I walked over there and I stayed and I saw like three movies that day and that was one of the movies that I saw. Yeah, I always, when I see that movie, think about 9-11. That's me and Glitter. I went to see, I went to see Glitter. You went to the movies to see Glitter? I did. That's that was dope. my 9 -11. You probably like the only one person. <laughs> yeah, it was like us and a gay couple. And oh yeah, that sounds about right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm probably going to leave so. Okay, yeah, no, we're uh, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, yeah. I appreciate you so much for coming. I had a great time. Gigi, great. you got to watch. I'm going to watch. I've been wanting to She's watch it. Have I was it. so excited that you guys were coming yeah. because um, I, I love the movie, for one. And I've been hearing so many good things about the series. Awesome. So, it's so good. I'm very progressive. Lie. You know what I mean? Let's I mean, people have had their criticisms. Yeah. Um, and it's very interesting because, you know, I used to write for Empire and people cr criticized Lodge. I was on a couple episodes. Oh I know, girl. <laughs> I love Shout out to Carlito. I, right, Carlito Rodriguez. I actually wrote um, for season two, the episode that Charlemagne was in. Oh, the uh, end. Uh, right, right. And then um, I did a voiceover for that one. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. It was like, and coming to the stage. Yeah. Exactly. I was like, why is it actually here in my episode? <laughs> but um, 
the criticism of the show is so funny because there are people who absolutely love the show and then there are people who are just like it's trash don't watch it I think That's it's good but watch- you anticipate that because the show is a polarizing type of show it's polarizing but sometimes I wonder if like we're just much more hard we're harder on our shows than we are on other people's shows oh, like yes you know what I mean like, <laughs> it's some people are like coming for us like how could you and why would you it's like just support like what the fuck is the problem if you want more of us on the screen yeah and on the television sets then you gotta support they still watch your friends that's why you can't trust these <laughs> now, friends are still a good show though my not friends been on like for like 35 years it's hard it's harder for me to watch that show now it's no it's black like, people there's in not it. one yeah, yeah, it's not Aisha it, it was like 20, 20 seasons later and Gabrielle you, Gabrielle I you thought it was the Aisha what was her name Aisha Tyler was yeah yeah and then Gabrielle see there's two oh shit because like there's no, two no, black people in the world <laughs> <laughs> that's no, the only thing like you know and we'll support that stuff like that so, yeah. me it, I try to watch everything like we know you watch every fucking every thing. black you know yeah. no, not even that. you watch everything though no 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 don't get it don't get it twisted. I will support, you know, other shows, but I lo- like I love Curb Your Enthusiasm. Oh no, Jamie that's Smooth my shit. On it. That's my <laughs> shit. He's yeah, my favorite. He's yeah, that's he's my so shit. Hilarious. But for the most part, there's been a lot of love for the show, mm-hmm. and you know, it's an honor for me working with Spike Lee. I'm that Brooklyn kid, right? Who, you know, when I found out Spike had offices on Decal, I was stalked by there like every yeah. day. And it worked to get a out. Toe, you know what I mean? Um, and so to be working with him on this show about Brooklyn is like a big honor for me. But I'm, 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 a lot of us are moved by the reactions that people have, especially people from Brooklyn. Like, finally, like mm-hmm. a Brooklyn show with Brooklyn black people in it. You know what I mean? So we're all really, really proud of the work. It and just feels good. It feels good. You know, to have like shows like Insecure. Yes. And, and people she's always compare the show to Insecure, and there's like no. Real I don't think it's comparable. comparable. I but would they more, do. They always. All I, don't the time. I would more so say that it, it gives us more. Like it's like progressive right now mm-hmm. for black women. I feel. In, in television or films or whatever. I feel like now people are starting to see, like, you don't have to be this typical, you know, what they would think the long hair, light-skinned girl. Like, you know, and I, it's not, because I got natural hair, so I look, well, not today. It's under there. Not today, <laughs> boo. Now, I got natural hair, though, right. but, like, you know, I just think that's dope how we can, like, shine, you yeah. know what I mean, for a change. And this is the whole point of lip yeah. service, I feel like, is to show that women can talk about sex and it don't have to be like mm-hmm. so taboo. They right. act like it's such a big deal. People, oh, I can't believe this is trash. A bunch of hoes talk. Like, no, women have we sex. Talk about. I'm sure you have sex with us. <laughs> right. Nowadays, you could get nutted on your face on HBO. <laughs> right. And, <be> mad about <laughs> right. It. Wow. and let's be clear. Be Does any? I didn't. I never understood why on Insecure she had a problem with him nutting on her face. Mm-hmm. Me Cause y'all either. like it, yeah, y'all yeah, like it's not that. A problem. I mean, I, she should have taken it as a compliment. Right. She like, should have doing something she right. Good Listen, she should have massaged it in her face. It take me. Yeah, it take a while for <laughs> my twist. Literally, <laughs> it takes a while for my twist outs to dry. So if you get a little bit of cum in my hair, like that's where the problem is. Cause <gasps> I'm at that one dangly string. Y'all didn't have a problem with. Y'all didn't have a problem with this. Something about Mary. Cause she was a white girl and it was funny. Make a song called. My, what is it? Did you have twist, a twist outs. out? Twist Come in my out. twist out. Come in my Could twist you out. please make that? Come in my. We got two songs because the other song from earlier is we, we got three songs. <laughs> when the dick hits the lip, how? Oh. <laughs> also, ho <laughs> instead of whoa. Oh. <laughs> I can't wait until our mixtape comes out. You I mean, know, can't wait. make sure y'all cop that first quarter. <laughs> <laughs> but no, we we really, really, really do appreciate you coming by. It's a yeah, big deal a for us. Time. And thank you for having a platform so that we could like freely talk about I see you what? drank that drink, yeah, girl. Did. You said the drink was too strong. You lied. Nope. In fact. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? I just want to say one last thing. Since we brought up Insecure, the guys at my job were so mad that Issa Rae on that show cheated on her boyfriend. <laughs> and like... I'm like y'all cheat every all day, every all the day. time. Why are you so mad? Like we're not because they can do it. Like, I promise you this: the guys right. will be like, "Oh, she not a ride or die. He just had an issue, mm. and she not gonna stand by her man. Yeah. She's weak for not trying to make things work." 
And then she cheats on him. Mm-hmm. And mind you, I look at it like she cheated on him, but he was really messing. He was on the couch. She was supporting him, taking care of him. Mm-hmm. But he Things wasn't even sleeping so in well. the bed. Right. And it was a little, you know, whatever. And it's, <laughs> cheating is wrong, man or woman. But I feel like if a woman cheats, people she look at it so differently. Sodom, Especially men. You yeah. might, yeah. Yeah, you might as well stone her. Cheating. With anything that goes on in relationships, it's always double standard with men. Men can go get away with this, that, and the third. But as soon as a woman does it, then it's like, oh, hell breaks. Yeah, like Erica Badu got three... Babies by three baby dip. Mm-hmm. Like, and she three gotta, rappers. She's trying to populate the earth with all of hip hop. She said it herself. Beautiful, talented, Absolutely. but nobody she calls got good her choice. nothing. Now. Right. They're all fine, and she she has some beautiful talent. I don't feel like she got judged though. She no, nah, she in judge. the beginning. Are you kidding? No, she's she's like definitely in the commented on it. Sure. And yeah. on people. On it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Whereas mm-hmm. someone like Christy Brinkley, it's the same thing. A lot of people don't know that she got three kids by three different. Wait, okay, Billy Joel. Billy Joel and two other people I don't know. <laughs> How about all these babies? We don't know. They got all these not, baby mamas. They wouldn't even call her a baby mama. You know what I mean? Like it's just a different set of Didn't standards. Didn't Shorty Lowe have like 20 baby moms? Oh, uh, R.I.P. Bless the right. dead, but he did though, right? He was he trying did. to do a reality show about it. Yeah, like But like no woman. Like that Remember when he tried to do the reality show yeah. and then they, and they actually boycotted it. Yeah, they boycotted it. Imagine and, a woman like me and my 20 baby daddies. Right. I'm, I would be watching it. I'm not gonna lie. I would be all into that God, show who can we yeah, see but, with 20 baby you daddies know what? there's a show on TV now I haven't seen it but it's called The Cromarties oh yeah yeah Tara Ka Antonio Cromarty right who has with his wife mm-hmm. he has about 6 or 7 children and he by the way he got a vasectomy and still had twins after that wow. what yeah what? see I gotta go and you get the what? He did, he did. Yes. Terica Antonio Cromartie. Oh, I you know, know them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But he, so with his wife, he has like six or seven children. This nigga got some he hell of a has sperm. Like stairs. Yeah. Like, like, he, he has, has a lot, lot of kids. Of kids Super of sperm. And he got a reality show out of it. And I don't think he's being shamed. So, you know, double standard. Mm-hmm. Ladies, this was okay. so much fun. Right. Thank you go out there. Yeah. We need you to be the first woman to have like 20 baby daddies. Yeah. Do a show about yeah. Swimming. I'm working on as soon as I step yeah, out of the store, gotta go. <laughs> so gotta be go. pregnant. Yeah, <laughs> we like pregnant. that. First one after y'all. We need. Listen, we need you <laughs> as the first interview after, <laughs> after <laughs> number service. twenty. Uh, I'll be here. Okay. Thanks so much for having Thank me. Thank you. But there's something about Mary. Because she was a white girl and it was please funny. make a song called Come In My... What is it? Did you have twist a twist out? out? Come In My Twist Out. Come in my Could twist you out. please make that Come song? In My... We got two songs because the other song from earlier... Is we we got three dick songs. Dick <laughs> when the dick hit the lip. Ho. <laughs> oh. It was also ho instead of whoa. Ho. Oh. <laughs> I can't wait until our mixtape comes out. You I mean, know. Can't wait. Make sure y'all cop that first quarter. <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, we we really, really, really do appreciate you coming by. It's a yeah, big deal a for us. Time. And thank you for having a platform so that we could like freely talk about. I see you what? drank that drink, yeah, girl. Did. You said the drink was too strong. You lied. Nope. In fact. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? I just want to say one last thing. Since we brought up Insecure, the guys at my job were so mad that Issa Rae on that show cheated on her boyfriend. <laughs> and like... I'm like y'all cheat every all day, every all the day. time. Why are you so mad? Like we're not because they can dish it. Like, I promise you this: the guys right. will be like, "Oh, she not a ride or die. He just had an issue, mm. and she's not going to stand by her man. Yeah. She's weak for not trying to make things work." And then she cheats on him. Mm-hmm. And mind you, I look at it like she cheated on him, but he was really messing. He was on the couch. She was supporting him, taking care of him. Mm. But he Things wasn't even sleeping so in the well. bed. Right. And it was a little, you know, whatever. And it's, <laughs> cheating is wrong, man or woman. But I feel like if a woman cheats, people she look at it so differently. Sodom, Especially men. Gamora. You yeah. might, yeah. Yeah. You might as well just stone her. Cheating. With anything that goes on in relationships, it's always double standard with men. Men can go get away with this, that, and the third. But as soon as a woman does it, then it's like, oh, hell breaks. Yeah, like Erica Badu got three... Babies by three baby dip. Mm-hmm. Like, and she three rappers. Like, she's trying to populate the earth with all of hip hop. She very said it herself. Beautiful, talented, Absolutely. but nobody she calls her choice. nothing. Now. Right. They're all fine, and she she has some beautiful talent. I don't children. feel like she got judged though. She nah, did she in the beginning. Are you kidding? No, I she feel like definitely in the commented on it. Sure. And commented on, on it. Mm-hmm. Whereas mm-hmm. someone like Christy Brinkley, it's the same thing. A lot of people don't know that she got three kids by three different. Wait, okay, Billy Joel. Billy Joel and two other people I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> How about all 
these but she don't have like, all these not, baby mamas. They wouldn't even call her a baby mama. You know what I mean? Like it's just a different set of standards. Didn't Shorty Low have like twenty baby moms? Oh, R. I. P. Bless the dead, but he did though, right? He was trying to do a reality show about it. Yeah, like But like no woman. Remember when he tried to do the reality show and then they actually boycotted it. Yeah, they boycotted it. Imagine a woman like me and my twenty baby daddies. Right. I would be watching it. I'm not gonna lie. I would be all into that show. Who can we see with twenty baby daddies? Mm. There's a show on TV now. I haven't seen it, but it's called The Cromarties. Oh yeah, yeah. Terrica Antonio Cromarty. Right. Who has with his wife, Mm -hmm. he has about six or seven children. And he by the way got a vasectomy and still had twins after that. Wow. What? Yeah. What? See, I gotta go. And you get the, what? He did, he did. Yes. Terrica Antonio Cremani. Oh, I you know, know them. He, yeah. Mm-hmm. But he, so with his wife, he has like six or seven children. This nigga got some he hell of a has sperm. Like stairs. Yeah. Like, he, he has, has a, a lot, lot of kids. Of kids Super out of sperm. And he got a reality show out of it. And I don't think he's being shamed. So, you know, double standard. Mm-hmm. Ladies, this was okay. so much fun. Right. Thank you go out there. You. We need you to be the first woman to have like 20 baby daddies. Yeah. Like, show about yeah. I'm on it. I'm on it. <laughs> As soon as I step out, you gotta go. As soon as you gotta go. Yeah, Yeah, we like that. First one after y'all. We need. Listen, we need you as the first interview after after number twenty. I'll be here. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you. Listen, we need you as the first interview after after number twenty. I'll be here. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you.